media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He was the number one U.S. stock market timer in the January 2020 edition of Timer Digest. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here, Jim. Thank you. Mark, do you still have that special offer for our listeners? We do. If listeners go to vrtrader.com, that's Victor Robert, vrtrader.com, and uh, look at the list of newsletters and any newsletter you pick, if you uh, place an order and come down to the promo code section, if you enter... The promo code 2020 half off. You get 50% off of any uh, product, and that's special just for listeners of uh, House Street. 2020 half off. The market, especially the NASDAQ, has recovered most of its losses. Why? Well, it seems like, uh, you know, the high flyers, which have really, uh, pretty much, you know, the greatest weight in the indexes have been the uh, favorites among traders here and investors. So uh, we know that the, uh, particularly the NASDAQ 100 and NASDAQ overall index are so heavily weighted with, you know, the high flyers, uh, the nifty five, six names, you know, the Apples, the Microsoft, uh, you know, Netflix, Tesla, and all those uh, big names. And I think, you know, a lot of the action has been in the uh, high-tech sector even before we saw the correction so uh the, the reason for it i think is that uh, these are the uh players that would attract attracting most in uh, investor interest and we're showing you know the greater the greater uh, volatility and uh profitability potential and you know we had a lot of traders working from their homes you know with the uh pandemic you know a lot of the movement we've seen in the market was not necessarily institutional some of the research i've done here and some of the readings i've had most inst- not most but many institutions were on the sidelines here it really didn't trade this market as much as we had thought they did i think you got perhaps the government in there more the federal reserve and so forth which we can talk about in a moment but uh uh you know a lot of um Individual traders out there, I think, had a lot to do with the movement and some of these uh, NASDAQ names. In any event, uh, you know, we're just speculating, of course, but uh, I think that's one of the reasons. Uh, somebody also told me all these people who used to bet on sports are now playing the stock market like it's uh, Major League Baseball or, or football. What's exactly. your thought on that? Okay. Uh, yeah, that, so that's my point. We've got a lot of people... Uh, Trader, you know, who are like new newcomer traders, maybe they were existing traders as well, but you know, they're home and they're at their computer and you can access the markets electronically. And, uh, it became uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, like you say, a sport. And, uh, for the, you know, hopefully they did well in their trading. If they were playing the long side here since, uh, <clears throat> March 26, they did pretty well. So, um, you know, many may many may not want to go back to work, uh, Jim. You know, there's uh, there is a living in uh, trading the markets. Cyclically, aren't we in a time frame for a top? We are, and uh, it doesn't always work. You know, if you go back and check statistics, sell may go away. Uh, some years is dramatic. Some years it's just a non-event, uh, sideways movement for a period of time. Um, but we are in a presidential cycle year. And there is a tendency for weakness between May and the election based on history, like 20 year studies and so forth that we've, that we've been exposed to and looked at. So, uh, you know, there, there is a risk of, uh, a bit of a correction during the summer or cho- choppy action. And, you know, there's concern about how the election is going to come out in the fall. And, uh, you know, 
my prejudices of uh, Democrats get in. It's not good for the market. But, you know, history does say over time, no matter who's in the White House, we still have our bull and bear markets. But I don't think uh, that would be particularly viewed favorably uh, based on the actions that Donald Trump has taken and some of the actions that the uh, Democrats uh, are hinting they would take. So uh, getting back to your cyclical question, I think, you know, you got to be prepared for some some volatility here between now and the fall. It doesn't mean we could still see a pullback and a move back to new highs again during this period. It just means it could be choppy. But I think as you get closer to September, August, September, October, the chances of a bigger sell-off are certainly, you know, history says are certainly there. What other forces may be at work behind the crash, recovery, and future market movements? Perhaps uh, we can talk conspiracy theory a bit. Yes, you know, I, I'm sort of sympathetic to that. You know, um, the, the term conspiracy theory really comes from the military. They apparently created this term years ago to discredit everything from UFO sightings to anything that anybody comes up with that doesn't sound, uh, you know, copacetic. But, uh, you know, there has been a lot of discussion about how the whole pandemic started, what was behind it. Uh, there were studies done that, uh, well, we can see that many corporate executives in 2019, I think there were several hundred big uh, name uh, executives that resigned their post. There are other research that uh, suggests, that shows that a lot of it, there was a lot of insider selling in stocks uh, in January before the market came down. Um, you know, we have political motives out there regarding, you know, trying to get Trump, Trump out of the office and maybe this was a, uh, uh, a vicious way of trying to accomplish that no matter who got hurt in, in the process. You know, there are rumors that the U.S. Army uh, started the, uh, had planted the virus there, uh, and the rumors that China just did it on its own, both of which we can't discount anything as possible. And, you know, a lot of the pandemic had been, uh, we call it the pandemic. You know, there's papers and research papers that have been posted and printed well before it happened talking about the possibility of it. I think to a certain extent it may have been planned at some point, but who executed it, that's the question. And the other big question is why, why did it happen? Is it only for political reasons? Is, is there still something out there? We talked about this weeks and weeks ago that the government, the powers that be, that want, to, want to cover up and, and redirect our attention away from. And uh, people laugh when I talk about extraterrestrials or talk about uh, geocosmic events such as uh, uh, asteroids or comets and so forth. But, you know, think about it. If they want to get everybody in their homes, they want people distracted, and there's something, you know, bigger happening out there uh you know, one way to do it is get a virus out there, and we could see how people were so willing and able to give up their freedoms and you know, obey the government uh, the way they did, which, in my opinion, we should not have done. I think they, we, we way overreacted to the whole thing. But um, it, the main thing is, uh, you know, the, and my gut feeling is there was something, you know, bigger behind it, whether we'll ever find out what that is. I suppose if an asteroid hits the Earth in the next uh, couple months, we'll find out that was the reason. But uh, maybe they thought one was coming. There were a couple comets out there. We did some studies that using uh, some of the NASA space tracking uh, information, and there were a cu- couple comets out there that were that were indicating that they could, in- could create an EMP uh, electro- electromagnetic pulse event that could, you know, send some negative waves to the Earth and perhaps knock out a lot of our electromagnetic systems. So. Before that hasn't happened, but there are a couple out there. You know, we had sent some research out to our uh, subscribers. They saw the names of the comets and so forth. So uh, I'm always thinking there's something else going on besides that. We had, you know, Cold War between us and the Soviet Union for so many years, but I think that was just a cover-up because we had worked together with the Soviet Union putting uh, cosmonauts and astronauts in space together despite that. So a lot of the including what's happening now with China. We can talk about that in a moment as well. But, yes, I think there is something that we may or may not find out about that was the real reason why this whole virus started. It just wasn't only one political reason, I think, though uh, that may have been an ancillary of, uh, effect of, of getting this virus underway. I just, I'm just too much of a cynic, and... Uh, we know stocks were sold ahead of the uh, sell-off, and we know corporate executives resigned last year, including Michael Eisner at Disney, which is a most notable name. And uh, the word got out that something was coming. That's the bottom line. We'll have more with Mark Lebovit right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company. 
with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, the big story, China. What's your take? Is it provocation, a planned event, a cover-up for other events? This goes back to my comment a few moments ago. You know, uh, what we see on the news and, uh, you know, it's not necessarily what's really happening in the background. I mean, President Xi and Trump and even Putin could all be behind this whole thing on a very high level just to distract us from other events. It could be... Uh, uh, a move toward currency uh, revaluation or something of that magnitude. We know what's going on in Hong Kong right now. If a uh, Hong Kong dollar collapses, for example, you know, uh, where's all that money going to go? Well, you know, it could f- drive it into uh, the U.S. dollar, uh, converting the currency out of a currency which may not be as viable or useful as it was in the past. Uh, we, we see pictures of warships off the coast of uh, Taiwan, we see the riots in the streets in um, in China, and um, you know I'm, I'm not to say that isn't a, a significant event. And there are valuable freedoms that have been taken away from the people in the communist state. I guess we're all hoping that it, the wall comes down the way it did with Ronald Reagan and with the Soviet Union, and things change in China. But uh, when, when I see you know all the uh, the swords being waved and all the threats being uh, put out you just wonder if you know this is just a lot of noise and there isn't something you know else behind all this and again i don't have the answer for that uh, of course the great fear is somebody actually shoots at somebody it doesn't mean if there are some shots fired that that uh, war is going to start necessarily but my initial feeling was when we start screaming about the virus and all the uh, all the commotion that was being made and we were being set up for some type of military confrontation now whether that's the real event or that again is just a cover-up for something bigger that's happening to distract us which is really my feeling even if we did some shooting it it is a distraction you know maybe there's something going on in iran maybe there's something going on somewhere else in the world and we have to be distracted from what's happening uh you know with the china u.s situation but um there's no question through the course of the century China has been gaining strength, and many have predicted they would take over the U.S. as the world economic leader in time. So um, the big cycles seem to point that way, and regardless of whether uh, you know, we like it or not, or whether we uh, blame them for the virus or not, or whether uh, some shots are fired or not, I think you know, the big trend has been for China to dominate and Asia to take over take over the world just as uh england went down the hill and the u.s had its uh, time in the sun uh and particularly with all the you know all the political confrontation that's going on in the u.s and the instability in the u.s right now in the financial markets and what the fed is doing uh printing money like crazy you wonder if uh the days are numbered for the u.s as the world leader we'll have more with mark lebovit right after the break Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. 
Mark, what's going on with the gold market? Well, the gold uh, seems to be the place to be. It's a hedge if uh, for no other reason. It does run its short-term cycles, and um, my work was indicating that the third and fourth quarter would be the stronger cycles this year for gold. And short term, um, perhaps here, say we saw a little bit in the last couple of days, perhaps even running into the summer, we could see a little bit more of a correction and pullback. Uh, I'm, I'm a buyer on a pullback, but I, I do see the charts as, as extended here. There are a couple of exceptions. So if you're in a position, I would hold on to your positions. But if you're looking to trade, I think you might have a little better buying opportunity, perhaps even $100 an ounce less than where it's currently trading. So uh, a bull, but I think we're extended here, and uh, uh, you might be able to do a little fishing here, and uh, then hopefully we can partake in a little bit more of an upward acceleration in the third and fourth quarter. Now, this doesn't mean gold's going to continue on and on and on. There is risk of deflation, particularly if the dollar gets stronger and stronger. So we could get a run here in uh, gold, and it could be you know, a nice run, third or fourth quarter. Maybe we go to new highs in the U.S. dollar. We know we're already into new highs in Canadian dollars and other currencies. But you know, maybe gold will make a new high, but it could be a bull trap. You know, It could be a nice surge, a tradable opportunity, but uh, we could find out uh, next year uh, or even the year after gold's you know, well off its highs and down again. So I'm, I'm taking more of a trading a perspective, and I'm a buyer on weakness here, and looking to, to trade out of strength uh, at the end of the year or into the first quarter of 2021. What's going on with the oil market? Oil market, uh, we mentioned this last week as well, uh, still has potential to go higher. Um, the big shakeout we saw, the minus $35 a barrel event, that occurred, I thought was uh, more of a generational washout type event, and uh, I think there's still going to be an opportunity here for gold, uh, excuse me, oil to move higher, perhaps in the forty to forty-five dollar a barrel range. But looking at a bigger picture, I wouldn't be surprised to see crude oil way, way up again. I'm talking about well over a hundred dollars an ounce. Back, I've been back to the record hundred and forty, taking a couple three-year perspective. And this uh, big low we saw here in the last couple months could have been again a, a, a generational type low or washout in the oil market. So, uh, plus we've got you know political reasons here in the Western Hemisphere to keep oil up to support the domestic oil companies, and I think politics plays a lot into that as well. So there could be uh, a little bit of manipulation there to get the uh, crude oil market going. But, uh, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion about demand lower because of the economic situation, that the less travel, less reasons for oil, and that all makes a lot of sense. But uh, by the same token, that did a $35 minus print in the crude oil futures market make any sense either, and it didn't. It was a manipulation. So I think... Uh, by the bottom line is it's tradable. Um, as a short-term comment, I'm, I would say I would look for a little pullback here. It looks a little overdone here, particularly the shares. But I think uh, looking forward, uh, my next target is the 40-45 range, and we might even see uh, $60 a barrel by the end of the year, early next year. What about the U.S. dollar and the Canadian buck? I still uh, I still favor the... the uh, the U.S. dollar, but um, there is there is a risk of uh, deflationary uh, pressures hitting uh, Jim, and I'm a little concerned about what that means in terms of getting uh, the dollar, keeping the dollar at you know at, at high levels. It, you know, a lot has to do with my theory regarding what's going on in Hong Kong. Uh, if we see you know more demand for U.S. dollars, that of course could drive the dollar higher. But the Canadian dollar, uh, you know. You know, has been uh, improving here, and a lot has to do with the recovery in the uh, precious metals and the natural resource market and the crude oil market. And technically, it looks uh, a bit higher. So, you know, so let, let me summarize here. I, I'm, I'm sort of new, neutral uh, on the dollar here, uh, but I can see a risk that uh, it could pull back uh, later in the year. And the Canadian dollar looks like it's in a short-term uptrend, and I think it could continue higher. And uh, that means, does that necessarily mean the U.S. dollar is going to uh, collapse? It just means it may not stay as strong as uh, we had seen. Much, again, depends on what happens with Hong Kong, so I'm monitoring that situation. I'd be long the Canadian dollar through this year, 
as I see commodity prices improving and precious metals improving and crude oil improving, but beyond that, we'll have to reevaluate and look at the charts. Are you a bull or bear, and what did your annual forecast model tell us? Well, I was a bull uh, beginning, um, actually, I was a bear uh, December 26th when we went on our sell signal, and uh, we were a little early, but uh, that, that threw us into the number one U.S. market timer slot because we got out of the market when other people were excited about it. Our, our model said to be a buyer in mid-March, and that model was created in January, so that was sort of a bullseye. And uh, the model overall is still, uh, it is a negative. It, it may show some choppiness here coming up. I think we're due for a little something right here. I like to say uh, right now, between now and early June, perhaps. And but I wouldn't be surprised that uh, you know it continues to uh, to hold hold up a little bit longer. And then you know I get more fearful as we get into this sell sell May go to way thinking September October period. So at some point there could be a, a bit of a shakeout. Uh, you know. Cut, coming up here and maybe we're going to get a little one here and maybe another little correction coming up at the end of the summer uh, but the answer your question the model overall said you know you should be positive from mid-march forward and you shouldn't be uh, that negative overall in the market so perhaps between now and the fall jim we're going to get more of a, tr- a trading range choppy market rather than a big up or a big down uh, and uh, with uh, maybe a little bit of an upward bias uh, in that process remember we got the fed in there uh, potentially, well, not potentially, probably buying uh, stocks. We know they bought some junk bonds from Hertz Corporation. I read that, which is sort of crazy. Uh, so the Fed could be buying ETFs and stocks and uh, doing what they can to support the market. So uh, with that sense, I'm sort of a cautious bull, but I recognize as time moves on here, you know, we got to be prepared for those occasional shakeouts and we are looking for one and whether it's starting right here or in the next month or so, you got to be on your you know, you got to be on your on your tippy toes here, watching for it. What are your favorite sectors or trades? Uh, my my favorite sector here, short term, has been the cannabis stocks, which have been uh, have been uh, tr- tr- tracking higher. Uh, and I also like you know the airlines, and I like the cruise uh, ship lines. If you look at the charts, they're all very cheap. I love stocks that are way down, you know, very depressed, coming off uh, big bottoms. Uh, that's been sort of one of our big opportunity, uh, opportunities over the years and catching, you know, big washouts and after big washouts and catching, you know, big bounces or if not pushes to new highs in some stocks afterwards. So the airlines, uh, the, the cruise ships, uh, uh, even the car rental like Avis, we know Hertz just went out of business, filed bankruptcy. So that one is, is on the list. Uh, cannabis stocks I uh, just mentioned as well. And um, also the um, you know stock like Boeing, uh, which is sort of uh, airline related. We've been trading Boeing quite a bit. Uh, that so it looks really cheap to me. You're talking about a four hundred dollars stock that got down eighty nine dollars and now is around one hundred and fifty. So the uh, airline related industry still looks uh, pretty good. Uh, keeping an eye on the metals, as I mentioned a moment ago, as we get uh, through the summer here, any pullback, you know, you want to be long the metals into the fall. And uh, off the top of my head, those are sort of our favorites. We're always picking up some trades, you know, here and there in stocks, but uh, those those are the groups that stand out. Mark, thank you so much for chatting with us. Have a great week, uh, Jim. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as vrtrader.com. If you have any questions for Mark or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter, at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.